ways that we know that Jesus existed is the fact that we know where he was crucified, died, and buried, and rose again from the dead. So actually, and contrary to popular belief, we are, we're actually pretty sure the exact location of where these events took place. It would be the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Now, there's been a lot of debate about the exact location. That being said, there are a number of factors that point to this site being the location. A, for example, there are a lot of a lot of the tomb, the, the, the Edicule and the Holy Sepulchre, which is supposed to be the actual tomb of Jesus Christ himself, is designed in the same manner as Jewish tombs of Roman times. You can find other Jewish tombs, the Holy Sepulchre, dating from Roman times. So, for example, there would be an entry chamber, and on the side side you have a ledge where they lay the body, and it's pointing towards the Temple Mount, as opposed to other tombs in the area. Now, of course, there's a, you can't just say that's a Jewish tomb, and there are a lot of Jew, Jewish Roman burials in Jerusalem at that time, so why that location? What the, well, one of the reasons we know we know that this is location, and that's that particular it's that particular tomb, is because the Romans intentionally canceled the site. So one of the Romans will build various temples at various locations. And I've spoken with people before. There is a long tradition of like trying to cancel across the globe, trying to cancel a previous group's religious practices by building a temple on their sacred site. So f for instance, think of uh, the Hagia Sophia in present-day Istanbul, which is currently a mosque. It, had, it was originally built as a Byzantine church. Um, when the Turks took over the city, it was turned into a mosque. Think of the Pantheon in Rome. Bridget built as a pagan temple, became a church. And we know that the Romans built a temple on the Ju on the Temple Mount, for example. Or in the, in the Pool of Bethsaida. And to, um, we know they built a temple of Jupiter up there. We know they, they also built a temple over the Pool of Bethsaida to the healing god Asclepius. We also, however, noticed that for some reason, this whole area was literally buried. They built an artificial mound over the site, covered over with dirt, and over the platform, put put, te put temples to various, to various Roman gods on the, on the site. Why would you go to such a tr trouble to build an artificial platform to, and bury a whole area uh, just for that purpose? Uh, we know from the history of Eusebius of Caesarea, that, keep in mind, he was only 300 years after the death of Jesus, and these oral traditions locally would have been preserved. They were doing it to cancel the, um, to, they're doing it to, can, to, can, to cancel Christian worship at that site. And, in fact, even among biblical, mainstream biblical archaeologists today, um, notably Gabriel Barquet, who wrote a wonderful article um, comparing and contrasting the garden tomb location that alleges to be the site of Christ's death and burial and the uh, Holy Holy Sepulcher, he, his article presumes that, yes, Jesus was a historical figure and that he was crucified, died, and was buried in at the Church of the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem. Indeed, from even the th from the 330s, we even have evidence of Christian graffiti at that site. Furthermore, if you furthermore, as for claims that the Gospels were written at a far later date. Then, um, then Jesus, the latest uh, go gospel account, the latest a uh, gospel was written was 90 A.D., aka 90 C.E., which would have been about 60 years after the death and after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Which that's not long ago. That's within living memory. That is not only quite reasonable for an account. Of Jesus' death and resurrection, it's entirely possible that, considering that's the latest, you could. It's quite reasonable to think that maybe these texts were written by eyewitnesses of these events themselves. I'm not, and so especially if you compare that with with the fact, compare that to figures like Alexander the Great, who most of the writings about his life were written four centuries after him, or Julius Caesar. Uh, who has not four accounts of his life, but I think just the one. Considering that in human terms, we're talking about a guy who, humanly speaking, is a rabbi who worked for three years in Galilee. Uh, yeah, golden standard. We have quite a bit of evidence that Jesus of Nazareth is a historical figure, and it is, and 
it is not and not, it is not really debated in the mainstream biblical archaeological community that he is anything Jesus is anything other than a historical figure. 